I'm going to channel spring by bringing you this really cute baby doll top and shorts. This is my take on the Oscar de la Renta puff sleeve blouse and short. everyone welcome to the urban sewing society where we bring fashion and creativity to your neighborhood my name is Jen and I am the urban sewist thank you so much for joining me today if this is your first time tuning into my channel please be sure to hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell so that you don't miss a video let's get into this upcycle it is spring spring is here Although in Chicago, it is 35 degrees, 35 degrees, you guys, what the heck? I refuse to take out my down coat, my full length down coat. Now I have been wearing the short down coat. I have been wearing my wool coat, but I just can't. It's like, I just, I can't. It was 70 degrees on the weekend and now it's 35 and it's not gonna warm up for about another 10 days. So we are in this. However, I'm going to channel spring by bringing you this really cute baby doll top and shorts, which is a DIY of the Oscar de la Renta puff sleeve poplin top and shorts. This is so super cute. I don't like pink, so I'm not making it in pink, but blue is one of my favorite colors as well as green. And I had these two blue men's shirts, Brooks Brothers, and they were perfect, perfect for this upcycle DIY. The top, $1,390. The shorts, $896 not happening if you are i would say anywhere from a size six or below you can follow right along with me if you're a larger size i can tell you where you can add more room in both the top and the shorts mostly on the side so if you have a bigger bust you just add a little extra here if you have wider hips then you can add some fabric in on the sides and i will talk a little bit about that in the video but i hope you guys enjoy this upcycle because i had so much fun doing it and i couldn't wait to bring it to you this is my take on the oscar de la renta puff sleeve blouse and short which i think is super super cute so enjoy for this blouse i created a muslin sample by cutting rectangle pieces of muslin to emulate the shape of the blouse. I placed them on my dress form to see how it would look and I realized it was coming together very nicely. I used those as pattern pieces. I used two matching men's Brooks Brothers large shirts. On both shirts I first removed the sleeves. I began to cut the bottom portion of the blouse first. Before recording this video I created a sample from two shirts I had in my stash and I used this sample as a guide during this process. I just measured against what I was cutting to make sure that my measurements were correct. And I cut straight across the middle to create the bottom portion of the blouse that is gathered at the top. At the end, it, be, it ended up being too long, so I would definitely measure that first. I removed the collar by just cutting right below the stitch line to leave room in case I wanted to use this later. Because I'm a smaller size, I was able to create the shorts from what was left over from the first shirt. With the shirt laying flat, I cut across the yoke on both sides and cut up the middle of the back of the shirt. I checked in with my sample shorts to make sure that this was going to be enough and it was correct. 
Now on to shirt number two. I thought that since I'm incorporating the buttons onto the bottom portion of the blouse, it might be a nice design feature to use the buttons across the back or the front. I'm not sure at this point. I took my muslin sample pattern and I laid it on top of the button plaque to see where it was going to fit best because there are buttons going across the front. I folded it a little bit across the top because I wanted to make sure I had enough room to fold it down. When I felt comfortable with the placement, I used my chalk pencil and traced around this rectangle shape and cut it out. Now I'm gonna show you how I tried it on, the shorts on, to make sure that they were going to come together. If the shorts had been too tight for me, right here is where you see the buttons. I would have used some additional fabric to fill that in, maybe create a pleat or leave it open. You can do this depending on how you want it to look. Now on to the sleeves. Since this was such an oversized shirt, I ended up ruching the sleeve above my elbow no other adjustments were necessary. Now, moving on to the shorts. You can see where I cut the collar and it's round on the top. At the top of the shoulder, it is slanted. So I need to straighten this out and add a yoke to the top of the shorts. What I'm doing here is taking my sample pair of shorts that I made and I'm measuring the distance between where the collar stopped and how much more fabric I'm going to need to add to the top. I'll just draw a straight line across the top and cut it. I already measured my hip so I know how long the yoke needs to be and I'm adding an extra inch and a quarter for the seam allowance. I believe the width of the yoke ended up being about six or seven inches. This includes the casing for the elastic along with the seam allowance. I used the leftover fabric from the second shirt to measure this yoke. You can see me measuring here with my ruler to make sure that I have straight edges. I confirmed the measurement of the top of the yoke down to the bottom of the shorts to make sure I had enough length. This is important because you don't want the shorts to be too tight in the crotch area. So you wanna make sure that it drops enough but not too much. If you're a smaller size like me, this is going to work for you really well. But if you're a larger size, you know you will need to add some extra fabric on the sides to accommodate your hips or if you want a baggier shape in the shorts. Now we're heading over to the sewing machine and I'm going to start with the upper portion of the blouse first. I put the right sides together and I sew one seam down on the side. I'm doing this first instead of um, pleating it and then folding it but in hindsight, I should have done them separately. I sewed down one side and I left the other side open for the zipper. Next, I'm moving on to my shorts and you're going to assemble the shorts just as you would assemble a pair of pants by putting the middle seams together. And you see here, I'm pinning in the center and I left the original seams in there. I'm going to sew all the way around the U shape and then next I will begin creating the yoke for the shorts. To create the yoke for the shorts, I just sew down the side seams about a half an inch on each side. I had some issues with my bobbin, so I this took, process took me a little bit longer. So you're gonna sew both seams down, and then after you sew both seams down, it's really important to go to the ironing board and press them open. Be sure to go in and reinforce your inseam. There's a lot of stress in this area as you're sitting and walking and moving around and you wanna make sure these stitches stay in place. It's very important during this process to press after you sew. Now that you've pressed all the seams open, you want to attach the yoke to the shorts. Match up the side seams and then use your pins to pin all the way around. If you didn't measure exact and you have a little extra either in the yoke or the shorts, you can simply create a small pleat and you'll notice that I created a small pleat in the front on both sides of my shorts. I'm planning to finish with elastic, but if you want to put a zipper in and a regular waistband, you can feel free to do so. Now I am going to sew and attach the yoke to the shorts. 
and you'll see where I get to a certain area and I have to create a little bit of a pleat because my yoke was a little bit smaller, but it turned out just fine. Now to insert the elastic, I am sewing the elastic inside the casing to do both steps at once. I find this to be quicker and easier for me. Moving on to the bottom of the blouse, the bottom portion of the blouse, I am going to have to gather this part around the top edge using a basting stitch. A basting stitch is your longest stitch and you wanna make sure you leave the ends of the stitch thread free so that you can pull it through. We will cover this in the How to Sew series. I'm pulling through and evening out the gathers for this part of the blouse. For the top of the blouse, I will fold over the top and then begin to pleat. I used the placket as the first pleat and then I created another pleat underneath that, pressed it down, folded it over, and then created the bottom pleat. Now you can make this any kind of way you want. If you notice on the original Oscar de la Renta top, there was a little abstract piece kind of on an angle across there, but I wanted to keep this really simple. So I just created simple pleats going across the front. And I ended up stitching these down so that they would lay flat. But once they were pressed, they were just fine. You have to measure the distance of from the top of your bust line to below to see how long this part of the blouse needs to be. As you see, I'm referencing the sample that I made to make sure that I make this wide enough to cover. And this is really important because you don't want it to look too long or for it to be too short. Uh, depending on your bust size, this is going to be really critical. So here, at the bottom, I created a pleat, but this pleat goes up. So the other pleat went down and the bottom pleat went up. And again, I was saying that I wish I had done these separately because the sides ended up being straight and they needed to have a little bit more of a curve. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button below so that you don't miss a video. I tried it on just to make sure that it was going to fit and it was a perfect fit. The only thing I need to do now is sew the other side down and insert my zipper. Now I moved a little bit ahead here. What I ended up doing was attaching the bottom of the blouse to the top. I matched up the side seams and I pinned it all the way around across the gathers until the portion where I needed to add the zipper. I left myself about three or four inches on the side so that I could insert the zipper. But here I am matching it up with the side seams, making sure that my gathers are evenly spread all the way through. And take your time with this. I kind of wanted to just get this out of the way so that I could put the zipper in and then sew around. So I'm matching up my side seams here. Now the camera doesn't show it completely, but here is where I am sewing the other side seam where the zipper is gonna go. I sewed it at about uh, a half an inch and I used a wider stitch since I am going to put the zipper in here and I'm going to remove these stitches later. And I ended up using a brown zipper um, I really didn't feel like running back to the fabric store and I knew if I sewed this really well, you weren't going to be able to see it and I was correct. When we go deeper into our how to sew series, I will talk about inserting different zippers. If you remember from the trench coat video, I used a lighter color zipper, but I used a flat over the zipper so you could not see the zipper there's ways to do hidden zippers and so in some cases it doesn't matter what color the zipper is and in some cases it does matter and here since i was really trying to get this project done i went on ahead and did the brown zipper so i'm finishing up the zipper here and coming up the other side stitching across the zipper doing my back stitch and now i'm coming back on the other side
we're getting really close to being finished now now I am attaching the bottom portion of the blouse to the pleated portion of the blouse and I'm sewing on top of the flat side and I'm leaving my gathers to be at the bottom going across the base plate of the sewing machine I find it easier to sew my gathers with them being underneath instead of trying to stitch over them with the sewing machine. Um, this may be an easier way for you. You might be more comfortable sewing on top of the gathers, but I find it better for me to work this way. Now it's all done. So completely around and now I'm going to add elastic in the back and this is so that I will have a better fit. I want the top to fit snug and even though it does fit around my bust well because I did not really tailor the side seams I want it to fit really good across the back so i'm going to take a piece of elastic i used one inch elastic or maybe one and a quarter inch elastic i measured it out and i cut about two inches shorter than the actual length that i needed just so that it would have just enough pull in there to fit snug across the back now i'm going in to reinforce the pleats when I tried this on, I didn't like the way the pleats were gaping out. So I'm running little stitches across maybe like two inch sections just to hold it together. You'll see later in the video where I actually went in and I put more stitches in. I did like the design of having little parts of it open up. But again, you can create this top of the blouse any kind of way you want. Here I am inserting the elastic in the casing. I've stitched about halfway through and now I'm pulling the elastic through. This way is easier for me. Some people like to create the casing first and then attach a pin to the elastic and feed it through, but I like to get mine done all in one process. So this is what works easier for me. Here I'm trying on the blouse just to make sure it is not too long and it is so I'm going to fold it up a few inches in the front and the back because I think that'll be better I'm also throwing on the sleeves to make sure that it's still going to be puffy enough for me all I'm going to do is add elastic along the top and that is going to have just enough poof for me if you want more you can always add additional fabric in there here I'm going to insert the elastic and again I'm going to sew the elastic together at the appropriate length that I need and then I'm going to insert the elastic at the same time I am creating the casing. This again is just the way that it works easier for me. Insert the elastic, fold it over and then pin it so that it doesn't slip and then sew all the way around. I'm really happy with the way the sleeve turned out at the top. It was just enough gathers to make it just poofy enough. Now I'm going to attach the sleeves right at the underarm, right at the side seams. And I simply ran a stitch about one inch long over that portion and it turned out just fine. Now I'm using these two strips to create the facing for the bottom of the shorts. If you recall, my shorts were just the perfect length. I didn't want them to be much shorter, so I couldn't turn them up to create the hem. So I'm using strips at the bottom of the shorts and I'm sewing a very narrow stitch at the bottom, attaching this strip, using an edge stitch, folding it over, and then I'm going to top stitch to create my hem. This is my final step. I'm also gonna serge it just so that um, it has a nice clean finish. And we are done.